Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, questions about our Truth Skin Health products, if you've read something or heard something, you've got ingredient questions, we welcome your calls on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to contribute to the conversation, likewise, we welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If we've left you on hold in the past as we completed the program, please let our call screener know and we'll get you first up at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website, our Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Healthy Star Pack, Sweeties, Fucoid Z, Swero V Cleanse, or Swero V. They're all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts as well as news stories on our websites, videos as well. Lots of good health information, free good health information. I don't believe in charging for information. I know there's a lot of healthcare practitioners out there who charge for information. I, I always found that to be unfair. It's not my information. I don't own the information. And everything we provide on our websites, all the information we provide on our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And there's some darn good information on there. It's all free of charge. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you so desire. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business, make some money selling longevity products, helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. And if you want to start a business and you want to have a longevity business, you can, of course, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. All for a one-time $25 fee. Find out more about it at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. And no surprise because there's no fillers or waxes or emulsifiers or surfactants or water or silicon or preservatives or fragrances or nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in our Truth Transdermal C Serum or any or in any of our Truth Treatment products, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and our Truth Serum, Truth Transdermal C Serum. If you're looking for products that will anti-age your skin, thicken your skin, reduce and remove and eliminate fine lines and age spots, just make your skin look healthier. Make your skin be healthier and make your skin look healthier. Look no further than truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We are talking about the health of the thyroid. 
Last we spoke, we were talking about the causes of hypothyroidism. We said primary hypothyroidism is based on an immune system attack, an autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland. Secondary hypothyroidism, on the other hand, is based on the thyroid's response to stress hormones and to adrenal duress, to adrenal issues. Over time, as the adrenal glands are cranking out their stress hormones, cortisol specifically, the thyroid will start to slow down. That's called secondary hypothyroidism. Then there's the whole issue of the mineral iodine. Iodine is a key player in the health of the body and the health of the glands, the health of the brain. Moms would be very wise, or moms-to-be, moms who are breastfeeding or pregnant women, would be very wise to be supplementing with iodine. Iodine, iodine deficiency is a leading cause of mental health and developmental health issues around the world in infants and children. Iodine, of course, is very important for the activation of thyroid hormone. A thyroid hormone is actually composed of iodine. Technically speaking, you have two types of thyroid hormone. You've got one called T3. Another one is called T4. And the number three and four, the designation three or four, refers to the amount of, or the number of iodine chunks, iodine elements or iodine atoms that are associated with thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone T3 and T4 are basically combinations of iodine and a very interesting amino acid called tyrosine, which we've talked about on this program before. Tyrosine is really fascinating stuff. It's, a, it's an amino acid that the body uses to produce stimulating substances like adrenaline and dopamine, also thyroid hormone. It plays a role, tyrosine plays a role in the production of pigment, melanin. Skin care professionals know about tyrosine and they will use topical preparations that inhibit tyrosine when they want to lighten the skin. A lot of folks are interested in lightening the skin, particularly in Asia. They're really fascinated with lighting, lightening the skin. Age spots, of course, are a sign of accelerated aging of the skin. And so skin lightening agents are one of the more popular active ingredients in skincare products. And skin care, uh, skin lightening agents, many skin lightening agents anyway, work by blocking the processing of this amino acid tyrosine, which gets converted into pigment. Chemicals you probably heard of, things like hydroquinone, as well as vitamin C. These are said to be tyrosinase inhibitors. And if you're in the skincare business, you've heard that term a lot, tyrosinase inhibition or tyrosinase inhibitors. These are chemicals that block the conversion of tyrosine into pigment. Tyrosine gets converted into pigment, and by inhibiting this, this conversion or the, the, uh, the trans transformation, I should say, of tyrosine into melanin, tyrosine into pigment, you can lighten the skin. There's lots of natural tyrosinase inhibitors. Hydroquinone is probably the gold standard of skin lightening, and it's a gold standard of tyrosinase inhibition, inhibiting the processing of tyrosine into pigment. But the plant world is filled with tyrosinase inhibitors. In fact, it's, it would be impossible to come up with a list of all the tyrosinase inhibitors or anti-pigmenting agents that are found in plants. Bioflavonoids, which we've talked about in the past, are particularly effective at uh, uh, inhibiting tyrosinase or stopping the production of, of pigment topical, uh, topically as well as internally. And bioflavonoids also work with vitamin C. They work hand in hand. A lot of vitamin C products will contain bioflavonoids in natural foods. Vitamin C is always combined with these bioflavonoids. And you can use the combination of vitamin C and bioflavonoids both internally as a supplement as well as topically for uh, inhibiting the production of melanin, inhibiting skin pigment production. Some researchers believe that vitiligo, which is a dermatological condition marked by patches of non-pigmented skin. Now, some re researchers believe that vitiligo may be associated with deficiencies in tyrosine. And this hasn't, I've never seen it anyway, actually proven. I've never seen any research that shows this for sure. Uh, but tyrosine, which is made from the amino acid phenylalanine, is according to at least one study, this one was published in 2005, uh, molecular Genetics and Metabolism is the name of the journal. Uh, people who have darker skin have eight times more of this conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine than folks who have lighter skin. Now, that doesn't prove necessarily that tyrosine and phenylalanine are, are somehow linked to uh, vitiligo and linked to skin lightening, but it kind of indicates that there may be a possibility. You can actually make your own skin lightening product or your own skin lightening toner, leveraging the power of of uh, tyrosinase inhib inhibition. I'll talk about that when we come back from our break on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a commercial and uh, come back with more good health information on the Bright Side right after this. We 
are back. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in our next segment. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're dealing with thyroid issues or adrenal issues or you're uh, interested in learning more about iodine or bromine or you've got a success story you'd like to share, or if you've got uh, want to just contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, you can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our website. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business. You can also call the Bright Side Ben phone team for more information, 866-735-2470, 866 735 is their phone number. We're talking about the thyroid. We're talking about the amino acid tyrosine as well as iodine. Tyrosine and iodine together form thyroid hormone. Tyrosine's got lots of interesting functionality associated with it. It's part of the uh, part of the uh, pigment making ma- machinery. Tyrosine uh, is a building block for the production of pigment and tyrosine inhibitors or enzymes that help process tyrosine inhibition, inhibition of the enzyme that processes tyrosine is a tried and true mechanism for helping lighten the skin. You can make your own tyrosine inhibitors if you like by mixing in uh, tyrosinase inhibitors that are found in various uh, fruits and vegetables, things like uh, uh, uva ursi, which is a wonderful tyrosinase uh, uh, inhibiting herb, bear claw it is called. Um, niacinamide has got some tyrosinate, tyrosinase inhibiting properties. Just plain old bioflavonoid capsules. Sometimes you can find these vitamin C and bioflavonoid capsules in stores. Get yourself some vitamin C plus bioflavonoid capsules. Make your own skin lightening cream by just breaking open a capsule and putting it in the cream. It'll go right in, kind of stir it around a little bit, and you make your own skin lightening cream. You can add it to a toner, make your own skin lightening toner. You want to use it fresh. Vitamin C breaks down when it combines with water, when it contacts water. So just every day, mix a little bit of uh, vitamin C, mix a vitamin C and bioflavonoid capsule into a little bit of your favorite skin cream, and you got yourself a nice skin lightening topical product. Tyrosine's found in high protein foods, especially dairy. And uh, the protein casein, C-A-S-E-I-N, which is associated with a lot of problems. Uh, in fact, a lot of the problems associated with dairy are casein problems. Casein is where we get the, the uh, Spanish word for cheese, queso. Uh, casein is a tyrosine-containing protein. So you'll find tyrosine in, in dairy products. The word tyrosine itself actually comes from the Greek word for cheese, tyros. You can use tyrosine as a supplement. It's pretty stimulating. I used to, I haven't done it in a while, but I used to use tyrosine in the morning. I found it a little bit too stimulating, actually. I don't drink coffee, and 100 milligrams of tyrosine was just a little bit too much for me. But if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues or maybe even thyroid issues, a little tyrosine periodically may, uh, may, may help you. 50, start off low, though. Start with like a 50 milligram dose or 100 milligram dose. If you take too much tyrosine, it can definitely make you jittery. It's uh, not a good, not a comfortable feeling if you take too much tyrosine. So you want to be a little bit careful with it. If you have anxiety issues, you especially want to be careful with it. Or if you have insomnia issues, definitely want to take, don't want to take tyrosine too close to, too close to bedtime. So the main thyroid hormones are called T3 and T4. The number three and four it refers to the amount of iodine that's associated with the tyrosine. T3 has three pieces of iodine. T4 has four pieces of iodine. So tyrosine is kind of like the chassis of thyroid hormone, and then iodine is attached to this chassis. T3 is actually the form of thyroid hormone that is active. T4 is not quite as active. It's a like a it's like a precursor to active thyroid hormone. It has some activity, but doesn't have as much as T3. In fact, uh, T3 or T4 is uh, four times weaker than T3. Interestingly, when you take your Synthroid, that's the wrong thought. That's the T4. They're giving you the weak stuff. They're not giving you the strong stuff. And in order to turn T4 into T3 or to turn inactive or weaker thyroid hormone into the more active form, your digestive system has to be working correctly. It's bacteria in the gut that do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to converting T4 into T3. So you got to have make sure that you have the right population and the right amount of gut bacteria. 
All of this is to say that uh, iodine is important stuff. T3 and T4 are not, or I should say T4 is not the right kind of thyroid hormone. T3 is the right kind of thyroid hormone, and you need both iodine and, both, and tyrosine as well if you're going to be making thyroid hormone effectively. Nonetheless, iodine is important. I'm not saying it's not important, but it's not like you can just take iodine as a supplement and somehow fix your, your uh, hypothyroidism. It's not like you can just take thyroid horm- uh, uh, iodine and somehow your thyroid will start functioning as well as it should. Iodine is important. I want to be very clear about this. Iodine is extremely important stuff. However, most people are going to get the basic amount of iodine. That's from iodized salt. They may not get enough iodine, but you'll get the minimum amount of iodine. You're not going to go into full-blown hypothyroidism for, from iodine deficiency for most of us. Iodine deficiency can occur. I'm not saying it can occur, but most hypothyroidism is about the gland itself, not necessarily about the hormone. When iodine levels are low enough to affect the thyroid, the thyroid has a very interesting way of grabbing enough iodine, of finding iodine somewhere in the blood. It'll get really big. It'll swell. That's called a goiter. And you don't see that very much anymore. In fact, since we started iodine, adding iodine to salt, goiters kind of went away. That was in the, somewhere in the 1920s and 1930s. But as I said before, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, and, and before then, iodine or goiters were quite common. And if you go on Google and look up pictures of goiters, you'll see how freaking hideous those things are. Then there's the issue of thyroid hormone weakness that's associated with various elements that look like iodine, which have a similar atomic nature to iodine. If you go to your periodic table, and I know most people don't go to the periodic table unless you're a chemist, but if you do go to the periodic table, you'll see a a row of elements uh, towards the end of the periodic table that are called halogens, and these elements all look like iodine. There's four basic halogens, fluoride, chloride, chloride, bromide, and iodine. And they all are kind of similar. And while iodine is what the thyroid needs, that's iodine is what thyroid hormone needs, I should say. The iodine is what really turns on thyroid hormone. The lookalikes, that is, especially fluoride and bromide, bromide and, and, uh, also, uh, and also chloride or chlorine, these look-alike hormones, these lo- or look-alike halogens, can sometimes displace iodine and cause a weakening of the stimulating effect of T3 and T4. And one of these elements, bromine, is especially problematic, according to Dr. David Brownstein, who's kind of an iodine expert, and he's written a bunch of books on iodine and also on, on the thyroid. He claims that um, brom- bromine toxicity is one of the more insidious causes of thyroid hormone weakness. Bromine is very efficiently absorbed from the intestine, very efficiently gets into the blood, and if you're deficient a little bit in iodine, the body's going to really is gonna, is, uh, try to make use of bromine. If you don't have enough iodine, if you're just getting the minimum amount of iodine, the body's going to actually try to stick bromine into thyroid hormone, and thyroid hormone will then, then be less effective. And this bromine-related kind of thyroid weakness can lead to a functional hypothyroidism that's not caused by the problem with the gland, but caused by a problem at a poorly functioning thyroid hormone. And this is especially problematic when bromine is present, but iodine isn't. That is, if you're not getting enough iodine, but you're exposing yourself to bromine, and there's lots of different ways we expose ourselves to bromine in our 21st century culture. It didn't happen so much in the past, but more and more we're getting a lot of bromine, uh, we're getting exposed to bromine, and more and more bromine toxicity is becoming an issue. We'll talk about that more as we continue talking about the thyroid and iodine. On the Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. back on the bright side and we have lots of lines open for you today at 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 if you have questions about the longevity products the longevity business thyroid questions if you're hypothyroid and you want help adrenal fatigue issues iodine issues bromine issues we're going to talk a lot about bromine in the next on our next bright side episode how we get exposed to bromine how hypothyroidism may be related to bromine also fluoride, we're going to talk about that as well, and also chlorine, chlorine in the water. How can anybody think that drinking chlorine and drinking fluoride on a regular basis is a good thing? Yes, I know we need to have chlorine for killing bacteria, but not necessarily anymore. But back in the day, chlorine, when chlorine was first added to the water, uh, cholera and other waterborne diseases were basically eradicated. But still, it's not a good idea to be drinking chlorine. And not only that, 
when chlorine reacts with toxins in the water, f super high power toxins are produced. We'll talk about all that in our next Bright Side episode. 844-236-6010 is our number. Get to a couple stories here, and then we will take your phone calls at 844-236-6010. This is from the journal Gastroenterology. A team of researchers has found that the familiar bloating many people experience after eating certain foods containing wheat may not be gluten. It may be something called fructan. Fructans are a special, uh, unique type of fiber that's found, uh, found in bananas and onions and wheat and other grains, asparagus, artichokes. Uh, garlic has some fructan. Sometimes people will react when they have these kinds of foods and they'll say, well, I didn't eat any. I'm gluten-free. I'm eating gluten-free and I'm still bloating and I still have skin problems. I still have arthritis. Well, that's because it might not be gluten. Yes, gluten gets all the press. And we talk about, and certainly it's a problem. We talk about it all the time, but there are lots of things in produce and vegetables and fruits and things that grow out of the ground that can be problematic. And fructan, fructans are one of those. Fructans, as I say, are a special type of fiber. They're sometimes added into foods. If you've ever seen the word inulin associated with a food, uh, inulin is a type of is a type of fructan. Um, especially certain foods that are, uh, pride themselves on being high fiber foods, or foods that like cereals that say they have a high fiber content. Processed foods that have a high fiber content typically, typically uh, will have something like inulin added to them. Sometimes you'll see the word chicory uh, as a disguised term for inulin. Sometimes even something uh, that known as a, a FOS, which is a prebiotic, can sometimes cause a problem as well. Specifically diarrhea and uh, irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. So it's not just gluten that is a problem. It can also be fructans, and this is published in the journal Gastroenterology. Speaking of gut bacteria from the, uh, from the uh, journal Frontiers in Immunology, new link found, <coughs> excuse me, between gut bacteria and age-related conditions. A new study shows for the first time that gut bacteria from old mice can induce age-related chronic inflammation when they're transplanted into young mice. Scientists have a fancy term for this inflammation that's associated with the aging process. They call it inflammaging. And inflammaging can be thought of as a low-level chronic inflammation that is linked to things like dementia and heart disease and strokes. Inflammation, or inflammaging, if you like, is associated with lots of problems. In fact, I would venture to tell you that there's no such thing as a long-term chronic degenerative disease that does not have some degree of inflammation associated with it. And keep in mind, when we talk about inflammation and long-term chronic disease, we're not talking about the kind of inflammation that you see. Most people, when they hear the word inflammation, think of a black eye or think of a, uh, a bruised ankle. Or, so these are the obvious forms of inflammation. But when I talk about inflammation associated with chronic long-term diseases and when scientists refer to inflammaging associated, as being associated with the aging process, they're not talking about the kind of inflammation that you can see with your eyes. They're talking about microscopic inflammation that is non-detectable except by symptoms. And there's no such thing as a chronic long-term progressive degenerative Degenerative disease or aging itself that does not have some degree of microscopic micro inflammation or as these scientists call inflammaging. And inflammaging is associated with the wrong kind of gut bacteria or so-called dysbiosis. Yet again, we see the link between gut bacteria, between the health of the intestine and the health of the denizens of the intestine, the, the living creatures in the intestine and our overall health. In pharmacy school, I graduated pharmacy school in 1986. Nobody told us about probiotics and nobody told us about the importance of gut bacteria. It was only in the 1990s when we first started to realize how fundamentally important gut bacteria are and were. And now, not a day goes by when not a, a new study doesn't come out that links gut bacteria and the health of the bacteria in the intestine to various health challenges. From the journal Science Translational Medicine, engineering the gut microbiome with good bacteria can help treat Crohn's disease. Penn Medicine researchers have singled out bacterial enzymes behind the imbalance, imbalances in the gut that are linked to Crohn's disease. You guys, there's no such thing as a good disease, obviously, but the worst, most awful illnesses are the ones that affect the gut, the ones that affect the digestive system, and they're so tragically unnecessary. Crohn's disease, celiac disease, 
irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, and God forbid, colon cancer are all linked to the gut bacteria, all linked to the health of the intestine and the, env the environment of the intestine, and whether or not it's a good environment for gut bacteria or not. Get on the nightly essence. It's a must-have. Eat fermented foods, especially fermented vegetables. They're must-haves. Use fiber every day. Grind up flaxseed fiber. Do it every day. If you don't like flax seeds, do chia seeds. Do some kind of seed fiber. Flax is awesome because you get all these other nutrients in addition to the fiber. Flax gives you vitamin E, and flax gives you protein, and flax gives you uh, other phytonutrients of uh, plant steroids that we've talked about in the past. Uh, flax is amazing, amazing stuff. You just got to make sure you grind your flax before you, uh, before you ingest it because flax has a hard coating on the surface and all the good stuff is underneath that hard shell and you're not going to get the benefits of the flax, the fiber, the protein, the, the trace nutrients if you don't grind your, flax, uh, uh, grind your flax seeds up. From the Journal of Public Health, published November 17th, that's today I guess, uh, 2017, link between obesity and cancer is not widely recognized. A new study published in the Journal of Public Health has shown that the majority of people this was from the United Kingdom. The majority of people in the United Kingdom do not understand the connection between weight issues and cancer. Obesity is associated with 13 different types of cancer, including those of the breast, kidney, bowel, and the uterus. However, after surveying 3,293 adults, researchers found that only a quarter of respondents were aware of the link between obesity and cancer. There's several reasons why obesity is associated with cancer. For one thing, there's the whole sugar and insulin connection. Obesity is basically part of a, 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 a health problem called metabolic syndrome, which we've talked about before. Metabolic syndrome is basically when the whole body falls apart, the, the chemistry of the body falls apart. Dementia is part of metabolic syndrome. Fatty liver disease is part of metabolic syndrome. Heart disease, high blood pressure, kidney disease are all parts of metabolic syndrome. And perhaps the most prominent aspect of metabolic syndrome is obesity. Metabolic syndrome equals insulin uh, and sugar problems. That means obesity and sugar and insulin, go to, uh, problems with sugar and insulin go together. Remember, cancer cells are sugar feeders. Cancer, in many ways, is a sugar and insulin disease, and obesity is also a sugar and insulin issue, thus the link between cancer and obesity. Interestingly, body fat produces inflammatory chemicals, lots of them. So the more body fat you're carrying, the more microinflammation is going on inside your body. As we just said, microinflammation is also linked to chronic degenerative diseases, including cancer. Also, the more uh, body fat you're carrying, the more, uh, the harder it is for the blood to, the heart to pump blood, which means the harder your heart's going to work, which means heart disease as well. There's no good things that are associated with obesity, and we have one third of American adults who are, can, can be classified as obese. I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. this Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products your advertiser recommended on the program, or if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also... Sign up to join the Brightside Ben team or purchase Longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to encourage you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is a particularly powerful skin health ingredient. I only formulate powerful skin health products. I don't want to be messing around with Me Too, uh, Me Too skin health, uh, uh, skincare products. There's so many of these out there. I've left, I've left companies in the past that were baloney companies selling products that are just silly, weak, non-potent, don't do anything for the skin. It's just not right. The skincare business is so predatory predatory and exploitative, especially for women. Taking advantage of our our desires to look good, our desires for uh, to have a, a beautiful appearance. The skin's an organ of the body, folks, and unless the skin is healthy, it's not going to look good. You can't fake out the skin. You can wear makeup, and you can cover up blemishes, and you can cover up dark spots, but ultimately, if the skin is not healthy, it's just not going to look good. You got to address the health of the tissue. Of course, this is going to be internally mostly, internal fats especially, essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs are unbelievably important for skin health. Dry skin in particular benefits from your ultimate EFAs. In fact, I first noticed the power of essential fats when I saw 
I was dispensing, I was recommending essential fatty acids for my patients who were, had heart problems, who had cardiovascular, uh, circulatory problems, not just heart problems, but high blood pressure, and I noticed their skin would improve. If they had eczema, their eczema would go away. Their dry skin would improve. Human skin should never be dry. If you have dry skin, and almost everybody does, rest assured you're dealing with some kind of internal problem associated with either fat deficiency or fat malabsorption. And oh, by the way, there's a very interesting thing that happens with, uh, with our ability to absorb fats when we drink fluoridated water. We're going to talk about this uh, in our coming Bright Side uh, episodes. There is a very interesting negative relationship between the ingestion of fluoride, which comes from fluoridated water, of course, mostly, and our ability to process fats. And this can be particularly problematic for folks who are dealing with pancreatic health issues, which we'll be covering uh, on a coming Bright Side episode. In any case, skin health is internal mostly. Topically, you want to make sure you're using topical vitamin C, topical vitamin A, and you're using it in the right forms, or using the, your products in the, with the right vitamin A form and the right vitamin C forms, and you're using the right amounts of vitamin A and vitamin C. If you're wondering, where do I go to get skin health products with high, high concentrations of vitamin C and vitamin A in the right form, look no further than our Truth Treatments products at truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal C Balm and Truth Transdermal C Serum, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, 844 236 6010 is our number. Let's go to Minnesota and say good morning to Kathy. What's up, Kathy? How you doing? Hi, good, Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, what's going um, on? My mother has uterine prolapse okay. and she's seeing a surgeon today. And oh my gosh. How old is she? She is 61. Oh, she's too young. She's too young. Do you know what a yeah, prolapse is? she has a quite a bit a of problems. She yeah. also has Hajimoto syndrome. She's had that for 30 years. And okay. now she it's has all connected. alopecia. All connected. All connected. Yeah. All related. That's what I keep telling her, and she's so... She's not buying into it? Doctor said, yeah, not at Why all. Why isn't she calling me? Have her call me. Have her talk to me. I, you talk. Yeah, she's. I think she's nervous about you know, change and having okay. to figure out what the real problem is. <laughs> well, uh, that's unfortunate because there's, you know, I mean, uh, what are they going to do? Stitch her back up from the inside? They're talking about removing it all together. Removing her uterus and removing her internal stru- yeah. uh, organs. Yeah. All right, here's mm-hmm. the deal. Here's the deal. A couple things. First of all, you can't remove any organs and not expect to have problems. That's number one. Hormonal problems, especially. Obviously she's not, you know, she's not going to be pregnant. She's not going to have a baby. Nonetheless, the uterus is still involved in hormone production and taking it out is going to mess up your hormones. That's number one. Number two, when you cut into the body in a surgical procedure, it's almost impossible not to end up with scar tissue and adhesions. This can cause problems later on down the road. It can cause pain issues. It can cause all kinds of problems, including constipation and, and, and uh, cramping and bloating, not to mention just plain old, plain old pain. That's the second issue. The third thing is, is that her prolapse is actually caused by deterioration, secondary, more than likely, to the Hashimoto's. Now, do you know what a prolapse is? Do you understand the concept of a prolapse? Isn't it where the connective tissue is falling apart? And basically. It's basically, it, gravity is pulling it. You got it. You it's like it. our internal structure, our internal organs are embedded in this a matrix of connective tissue the way a, a fruit is embedded in a jello mold. You ever see a jello mold with pieces of fruit in it? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, that's basically what the inside of our body looks like. We've got jello and our uterus and our bladder and our kidneys and our spleen and our stomach and our liver are all embedded and all the other structures are all embedded in the jello. Does that make sense how I, how I talk about how I describe that? By the way, jello is connective tissue. Jello itself is connective. It's cow connective tissue. So it, the metaphor is a perfect metaphor. So basically when you uter- when you have a prolapse, it's like your pineapple's dropping. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so yeah. basically the connective tissue is deteriorating, the fruit is drop is dropping out. Why is the connective tissue deteriorating? Well, obviously your mom has has had 30 years of the body not doing what it's supposed to be doing. When you're hypothyroid, when you're hypo uh, Hash- have Hashimoto's, you don't make connective tissue. This wreaks havoc on the body. So what she should be doing, and, and I know she's got, it's probably a little bit too late to eliminate the prolapse. I don't know if I go as far as to have the uterus removed. But in any case, what she, she needs to be doing absolutely at this point in time, post-surgery, as that is, is loading up on anything that helps her build connective tissue. She's pounding it. 
pounding it, and that includes things like uh, Nox gelatin, or, or even better, organic gelatin, her glucogel caps, vitamin C, essential fatty acids, whey protein, or some kind of uh, a protein that provides connective tissue building blocks. Bone broth protein is, is real good. Chicken soup made with, uh, made with the cartilage in the bones and uh, all those cartilaginous factors will help her build connective tissue. That's how we build connective tissues, by eating connective tissue. So when you eat your glucogel caps or you eat a, a, a bone broth or bone broth protein or you eat gelatin, organic gelatin preferably, but any gelatin if you have to get some gelatin in your system or high aluronic acid capsules, your body will make more connective tissue. And keep in mind, you cannot make connective tissue without vitamin C. Vitamin C is the, is the switch that turns on the production of connective tissue. So you need the raw materials, and then you need the switch that turns it on, and that's the vitamin C. Something as simple as vitamin C deficiency can lead to prolapses. And by the way, hernias are, are the same kind, of, uh, same kind of issue. The connective tissue is sort of deteriorating and breaking down. Ruptures and hernias and those kinds of things. So uh, making sure that she's using all the connective tissue building supplements, including vitamin C, after her surgical procedure can and help her recover. And also, in the long run, it will help reduce some of the other untoward symptoms that she's likely to have. That's the problem when you have a surgical remedy, is you don't address the real causes, so the body continues to deteriorate. At the age of 61, she's breaking down way too fast. Now, you might want to have her listen to some of the stuff we've been talking about, about Hashimoto's and, and hypothyroidism, because the chances are pretty good she can correct that as well. Is she on Synthroid? Is she on a, some kind of thyroid oh, yeah. medication? All right, so, yeah. obviously, it hasn't done her much good, but if she, uh, if she does things like uh, corrects her adrenal adrenal stress issues, works on her digestive system, make sure she's getting into uh, some probiotics and fermented food, supporting gut health. That'll go a lot further uh, for helping her thyroid and improving thyroid health than the, than the Synthroid will, uh, will ever do. So working on the thyroid post-surgery is going to be important. Working on the connective tissue by using connective tissue building supplements post-surgery is also important. Last but not least, have her using digestive enzymes on an empty stomach post-surgery, even pre-surgery. Even today, have her start loading up on nutrients because then once they do the cutting uh, at the, in the surgical procedure, there'll be nutrients present in order to speed up, he, speed up the healing. She might also want to throw in, by the way, uh, an amino acid called arginine, which can be very helpful for healing. So have her start pre-surgery pre and then continue post-surgery. Uh, the ultimate enzymes on an empty stomach pre-surgery and post-surgery can reduce swelling and inflammation uh, after she has her surgical procedure. And also vitamin K is very interesting for keeping bruising down post-surgery. So if she loads up on vitamin K pre and post, her surgical procedure, and by load up, I mean something like 5,000 micrograms of vitamin K2 every day. She'll have a, a, a dramatically less bruising, and she can also use vitamin K creams topically to help uh, reduce the bruising. Sometimes uh, if you just put the vitamin K right on the bruise or right on the area that's bruised pre-surgery, the area that will be cut, and then post-surgery, the area that has been cut, that can also have a beneficial effect, not only for bruising if it's already there, but for, for preventing bruising and speeding up the healing of bruising. Lots of stuff you could do. Uh, not, not necessarily to take care of the prolapse, but pre and post surgery to prevent, or to speed healing and to prevent further damage. I hope that helps you, Kathy. Thanks so much for your yeah. call and uh, tell your you. mom best of luck uh, with her surgical procedures. All right. That is all the time we have on the Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all kinds of good health information and the Longevity products. And please check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Fibers, Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Transdermal Sea Serum at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later, friends. Bye for now.